The Toronto Blue Jays beat the Kansas City Royals 3-0 in a game that saw Alec Manoa go seven shutout innings, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit his first home run of the year, and Dalton Varshow continuing to impress. So we're going to break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Dodges. What's up, Jays fans? Thank God, your host of Jays Digest. And before we do get into this great game recap, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Your support's been unbelievable. We're on the road to 7,000 subscribers. So if you could hit the button to support our daily Jays content, it would mean a lot. And Peter will be back in the next video. But let's get into this crazy game that was tonight against the Royals, where Vladdy and Versho impress. And going into this game, you know, the main story was Alec Manoa. How would he bounce back? Um, from his opening day start was the pressure getting to him and things like that and what like we'll touch on in the next chapter Manoa was unbelievably dominant but regarding Vladdy and Varsho what a game out of the two and especially Dalton Varsho who we're going to touch on first before getting into of course the Vladdy home runs now Varsho has been an unbelievable addition so far looking at the box score here we can see Springer went one for four Bichette went 0 for four but you get down to Dalton Varsho who went three for four and he's hitting the ball to the opposite field a ton now, coming into spring training camp, of course, the Blue Jays gave up a lot of their key staple guys and, you know, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., Teoscar Hernandez, and, of course, Gabriel Moreno in the trade for uh, for Dalton Varsho. Dalton Varsho was advertised as a guy who has tons of speed, is an amazing defender, can hit the ball for power, doesn't hit it to the opposite field much, doesn't walk much, strikes out a lot, but he was, you know, he's a true five-tool player. And man, he has exceeded every expectation I have put out for him so far by a landslide. He does the little things, and those are the things that just make you so happy watching this new brand of Blue Jays baseball that the roster and Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins at least hoped to put out this season. Dalton Varsho on the defensive side of things tonight caught a ball that had an 890 expected batting average, and he made it look easy. He made it look like a joke, and he is unbelievable on the defensive end. And like it shows here, he also went 3 for 4 at the dish, hitting a couple of off opposite field singles, and... His base running as well is unbelievable. And Beck Martinez mentioned in the on the broadcast today, whether he's tagging up, rounding the bases to score. He scored on a single from second base, and you could just tell that he was running. He's so fast. He puts 100% into every single play that he does, and it's what makes him such a good baseball player, and I'm just so happy that Dalton Varsho is on our team. From defense to base running to hitting, he has been unbelievable. I'm just so happy. That's my rant over about Dalton Varsho, but unbelievable so far out of Dalton Varsho and I could not have been happier with the trade that we have made now touching on some of the rest of the hitters before we do touch on of course the the main topic here which is Vladdy like I said Springer went one for four with a nice single Bo Bichette unfortunately went hitless uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Dalton Varsho both went three for four Matt Chapman went one for four Alejandro Kirk one for four Belt continues to struggle and Whit Merrifield also got a hit and Kevin Kiermaier came in as a defensive replacement and didn't get an at-bat and we will touch on Matt Chapman later in the video. The one for four isn't really telling of how he actually played. So we'll get into that in a little bit. But first, let's get into Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Now, before I show you guys the home run, I just want to point this out to you guys. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., of course, hit his first home run of the year. But what's more notable is that he's hitting the ball even harder at 98.9 miles per hour exit velocity on 21 batted balls and has struck out just one time in 29 plate appearances. That is unbelievable. And someone else pointed that out, Mike Petrillo. Has anyone noticed Vlad has just 1K in 29 plate appearances so far? It is truly crazy that his discipline is... It's unbelievable to start the year. He's seen the ball so, so well. Of course, his batting average is now above 300, but before coming into this game, it was around 278, but he is hitting the ball so hard. He has 100th percentile max exit velocity on batted balls in play, meaning that he is hitting the balls as hard as anyone in Major League Baseball and harder than anyone because there's 100th percentile. But looking at his home run here, in case you missed it, it was a doozy, an opposite field bomb, 390-ish feet, and he had a little bit of a bat flip there, as you can see, and of course, it was great to see. It was, it was not off Zach Granke, it was off Clark, but what a swing. A well-needed insurance run for the Blue Jays to put them up 2 to nothing. as it seemed like the offense was super, super slow. And this game was extremely fast, finishing just under 2 hours and 20 minutes. The games are flying by. Of course, both pitchers in Manoa and Granke pitch well, but overall, the hitters did their job. They got four runs and some very, very good things that are Varsho, Chapman, and Guerrero. Now, let's get into Alec Manoa, who continued to dominate throughout um, this game. Of course, the main storyline coming in, like I mentioned earlier, was how he would bounce back from his opening day start, maybe the opening day jitters, where he just went, I believe, three innings and gave up a few runs. He bounced back very, very well, carrying a no-hitter through five innings until Jackie Bradley Jr., of course, the former Blue Jay, broke it up with a single. 
but he did have some command issues early. Now, there was only three pitchers used in this game, but Manoa went seven innings, giving up one hit on four walks and five strikeouts. Again, the one hit was to Jackie Bradley, and it was a fairly weak single, but it was a hit, and uh, control was a bit of an issue for him, but like someone mentioned on Twitter, and they kind of mentioned throughout the broadcast, the reason why Alec Manoa is so good is even when he doesn't have his legitimate amazing stuff that night, he battles and gives you quality starts and quality outings, especially after a bad start. If you look at the stats last year, coming off of a bad start, he pitches unbelievably, and that was again the case here tonight. As he, uh, he pitched very, very well. Again, seven innings, only gave up a hit. And he battled. And Alec Manoa bounced back like we all know he would. And now he sets his eyes on the home opener against the Detroit Tigers on April 11th. Where I'm sure he will dominate and be unbelievable there. But looking at the rest of the Blue Jays pitching, Eric Swanson... With the quickest half inning I remember watching, it seemed like I blinked and it was over. He struck out one. His splitter was looking phenomenal. His fastball was looking phenomenal. And what an addition he's looking to be like. And, of course, Jordan Romano does Jordan Romano things and closes out the game in style. But a couple of other things here before we uh, move on to the next topic is, again, Alec Manoa, seven innings pitched. Didn't have his best up and still dealt great bounce back. And that was the key tonight was his bounce back. And I'm going to show you a quick clip here in case you miss it of his filthy slider sweeping from right to left to strike out um, the Kansas City Royals hitter. And what a game. And his changeup as well, of course, was also something that was unbelievable. But what a game for him. It was uh, a very, very fun game to watch. And a well-needed, you know, not many nerve-wracking stuff happened this game. It wasn't really a clincher. It was more of a chilled-out game. But early, the Blue Jays' bats were getting very, very unlucky. And that's kind of going to tie into this next topic now with Chapman stays hot. And like I said... Matt Chapman did only go one for four, but he had, I think, the hardest hit ball of the game that ended up in a fielder's choice on a pretty bad throw by Bobby Witt Jr., which gave us our first run. But Chapman is absolutely crushing the ball. He's crushing it to the opposite field seemingly every single time he gets the chance to. And he's been stellar in defense, of course, besides that one error that plagued him early on in the season. That one error has been his only time, and Peter mentioned it earlier on the pregame show. The only thing that I've been upset with so far at all, even anything in a game was that one error by Chapman. Other than that, I've been super, super happy and errors happened. wasn't really upset. It was just unfortunate at the time. But again, Chapman did go one for four, but he is crushing the ball. And like Vladimir Guerrero Jr., even if sometimes they go one for four or two for four, they crush the ball. And Chapman is looking to be unbelievable. With a, Coming in this game, he had like a 307 OPS plus. It, it was, it's unbelievable. But of course, small sample size, but Chapman is looking very, very good. And I just wanted to point that out there. And again, I'll pop up the box scores. He did go one for four, but man, he's been crushing the ball. And it is absolutely great to see. And if everyone can keep hitting like, you know, Matt Chapman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., if they keep doing that thing, and especially Dalton Varsho, our team is looking very, very scary as we're now officially back to 500. We are three and three. And let's move on to the next topic now, which is looking ahead to tomorrow's afternoon game with Kevin Gosman taking the hill. I have full confidence in Kevin Gosman. The defense seems to be warmed up, so no more errors to hopefully cost Kevin Gosman any runs. And he was dominant in his first start. Of course, six innings gave up no earned runs, three uh, unearned runs, of course, because of the Matt Chapman error. But Kevin Gosman, I have full faith that he is going to carve up this Kansas City Royals lineup tomorrow and move us to four and three heading into the Los Angeles Angels series. But again, the main thing and the key thing tomorrow is going to be focusing on the little things, focusing on defense focusing on base running, steal a couple bases, and uh, Kevin Gosman, hopefully his splitter looks good. And like, I, like I'm going to show you here now, the bullpen was hardly used today. Of course, Eric Swanson, this was his second day in a row pitching, although yesterday he only pitched one-third of an inning, but you wouldn't expect that he's going to be available tomorrow unless absolutely needed. Romano can go back-to-back -back days, um, you'd assume, though he also pitched yesterday, so we'll see how that goes. But the bullpen is fairly rested. We have a lot of guys, of course, Anthony Bass, other Jimmy Garcia, players like that who are fully capable of of going out tomorrow, throwing gas, and hopefully we're in a position where it's a blowout game. Kevin Gosman gives us seven or eight innings, and we're going to be in good shape. Because like they mentioned on the broadcast today, when the starters go deep, like Alec Manoa did today, even Jose Burrios, when he had his really, really bad start, giving up, I believe, eight earned runs, he still went five and two-thirds innings, saving the bullpen a little bit. When the starters go deep, the bullpen gets less worked, and it ultimately just leads to a more, of course, rested bullpen, but a more cohesive team that... uh that will lead to more wins in the future. So shout out to Alec Manoa tonight and shout out to you guys for all the support. It has been unbelievable. A quick reminder that the game tomorrow, if you're watching this the night of, 
is in the afternoon. Of course, it's a Thursday afternoon game, so we will be live for a pregame show. Hopefully, Peter will be able to make it. He's experiencing one of the uh, the huge power outages in Quebec, so he wasn't able to make it here today. However, he will hopefully be back tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the game, and hopefully, the Blue Jays win tomorrow. See you then.